welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. What's up, Do It Heartily? How are you guys doing today? Hope everybody is having a, uh, a good Christmas season. And you guys are looking forward to uh, just a good time with family, maybe, a good time with some traditions. And uh, hopefully you're able to keep up with Do It Hardly and keep up with your Bible study and Bible reading this season. And so um, I want to uh, share just a, a quick word with you from Matthew chapter number one. If you guys want to go ahead and turn there, Matthew chapter number one. And uh, really, I want to look at a verse, just one verse really today. And um, it's a verse that's easy to miss. You know, sometimes you read your Bible and uh, you read through a bunch of verses and you kind of like skip through some of them maybe in your head, don't really pay attention to what they're saying. That's kind of the way this is here in Matthew chapter number one. And uh, you guys are probably familiar with the uh, Christmas story from uh, Luke chapter two here in Matthew one, Matthew chapter number two. And so some of the things that I'm going to share with you today, you probably are already familiar with, but uh, I want to to look at a guy that you're probably familiar with too. His name's Joseph. You guys know Mary and Joseph, right? So um, I want to talk about just some aspects, uh, really, of his character. And one of those things is righteousness, or someone who's being, uh, who's just, and what those things mean. So let's look at Matthew chapter number one, verse number 19. And it says, And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, or being a just man, so what I want to get with you before we tell you what's going on here is, what does it mean to be righteous? What does it mean to be just? And uh, the way I really like to think about it is uh, that word righteous. There's the first part of that word that you're probably pretty familiar with, righteous, righteous, to be right. And so, you know, this is the idea of being right before God. He sees us as being in the right. He gives us righteousness. He makes us right. Even though we're sinners, He's able to take our sin and forgive it and do away with it, and he's able to give us the righteousness of Christ. And when he sees us, he sees us as if we're in the right, like we hadn't done anything wrong. And so uh, we know like righteousness has to do with our relationship with God. But what I want you to think about today is what does righteousness look like in your day-to-day -day life? So if you are a righteous person, What's that going to look like in the way that you interact with people? What's, can people look at you and tell you're righteous? Can they tell you're just? And uh, Joseph gives us a really good example. And so if we look back at our verse, Matthew 1, 19, Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man. So here's what's going on. Um, Mary and Joseph, they are engaged. Okay, they're betrothed to one another. And so just like today, you know, when a man and a woman are about to get married, they have that engagement period where he's asked her to marry him or and they're planning the wedding, but they're not really married yet. And uh, that's kind of what's going on here. But there's a problem. The problem is Mary is about to have a baby and they're not married yet. And Joseph, he didn't have anything to do with it. And so he's worried about a lot of things and he is about to make a bad decision. But it's not, it's not like from the outside looking in, it, it looks like he's going to be doing the right thing. I mean, you know, she, did she cheat on him? Is she an adulteress? Look what, look what happens here. So he is, he's worried about this. He finds out about Mary and he looks in verse 19, Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her plan to send her away secretly or plan to divorce her secretly. So Joseph doesn't want to uh, disgrace Mary. If you look there in the verse, it says he did not want to disgrace her or he really, that's the idea of to make an example of somebody. Okay. So like he didn't want to take Mary and make a big show of her and tell everybody, Hey, look what this woman's done. Uh, we're supposed to get married and she's about to have a baby with somebody else. And, we need, to, we need to put the full punishment on her. So that word means to make an example of somebody. Maybe you've been in school. Maybe you've been getting in trouble. The whole class is cutting up or something. Or maybe you and your brothers and sisters at home and you're cutting up and maybe the teacher's like, you know what? And they, 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 they single out one of you and they just, 
they come down hard on you. They give you a, a big punishment or maybe one of your friends or something. And what does that do? That causes everybody else to straighten up because they don't want to be in trouble like their friend, right? Because the teacher made an example of them and came down hard on them. And Joseph, it says, he did not want to disgrace her. He did not want to make a public example of her. Okay, so he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to do that. He's a righteous person, and he plans to send her away in a secret way. Not because he's embarrassed or because he's ashamed, but really because of the way he feels about Mary. Remember, this is the woman he's about to get married to. He loves this woman. And so he doesn't know what to do. And the funny thing, well, not the funny thing, the serious thing about this is that the penalty for someone who had committed adultery in this time was to be stoned to death. Can you imagine that? What if Joseph would have accused Mary, drug her out into the public square there, told everybody what happened, and they stoned her to death? That's what was supposed to happen. If you read Deuteronomy chapter number 22, you'll see it right there. If someone's engaged to be, uh, to be married and they go and lie with another man and both of them are supposed to be stoned to death. That's like the full harsh law of what's supposed to happen. But Joseph, he doesn't want to do that, right? He does not want to disgrace her. And the question that I want to ask you is, why? Why does he not want to put her away in a very public, harsh way? Why does he want to do it secretly? Why does he not want to disgrace her? And the answer is what we're going to look at. And it's found right here in our verse. If you look back at the beginning of the verse, Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, and that word being a righteous man or being a just man, maybe, that word gives us a clue because what Joseph did in this verse is he decided to divorce her in a secret, quiet way. Why did he do that? That word being a righteous man tells us. The word being kind of gives us the idea of the reason why he did what he did. We would use the word because in English. So let's look at it that way. Joseph, her husband, because he was a righteous man and because he didn't want to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly or quietly. So again, it's not that he was ashamed. He's like, oh, I don't want people to find out that Mary did this. It was an idea that, hey, because I'm righteous, and because of the way I feel about Mary, I don't want her to go through a harsh punishment. I want to be merciful to her. I want to be compassionate to her. And that is the whole point. What does biblical righteousness look like in your life? It should look like mercy, kindness, and compassion to people. 